Welcome, future doctors, to another episode of the Future Minority Doctor Podcast with Dr. Sulma and Marina, where we bring you conversations to empower and inspire you to contribute to your community and the world by becoming a doctor. Hello, future doctors. Thanks once again for the support. Today, I get to interview a very special guest and an ob doctor. I'm happy to introduce to you Dr. Michelle Contreras. Dr. Contreras is a board-certified obstetrician and gynecologist. She received her degree from the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine. She continued her training at St. Joseph's Hospital in Chicago. Her years of experience and exemplary bedside manner are the reasons she leads the team of professionals at our San Diego location. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Michelle. She's she's post call, everybody, and and we'll talk mm-hmm. about that as we get to know her. What that is, so Hi, it was very really nice. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right, if you can start out, um, Dr. Michelle, by explaining to our listeners what an OB gyn doctor actually is, and then if you can just talk about what a workday is like for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. So an OBGYN doctor, it's short for obstetrician and gynecologist. What it really encompasses is we are the experts in women's health. And the first part, the obstetrician part, means that we are taking care of women through their pregnancies and any pregnancy-related condition or complication that they may have. There's You think of someone being pregnant and having a baby, but there's all sorts of things that could potentially happen or go wrong, even in the early parts of pregnancy. And so we take care of all of that, including any surgeries that may be related to the pregnancy. And so that's the obstetrician part. The gynecologist part is related to women of all age groups, really, because all women can have a reproductive or issues with their female anatomy. And so we can take care of all of those aspects, including any surgeries as well. So that's a broad description of an OBGYN doctor. What is my day like? I guess the nice thing for anyone out there who tends to get bored easily, um, the nice thing is that my day can be very, very different from day to day. And that's I think one of the reasons why I like being an OBGYN. So my day sometimes could be in the clinic, seeing patients, um, seeing a mix of patients that have prenatal visits or GYN problems, like maybe their menstrual cycles are too heavy or too painful, and I would be um, seeing those patients in the office. There are days where we um, also maybe just schedule surgeries, so seeing patients in the operating room for scheduled procedures could be a totally different day. Maybe I don't go to the office on those days. And then the other part of our field that we cannot escape is the part like being on call and being available for those patients at all hours of the day or night for emergencies or their deliveries of their babies. So that all of that can vary from day to day. So There are some days that are kind of the same thing over and over again, but there's definitely a big range and you can kind of tweak your career to what suits you best or what you enjoy doing the most. So I know you worked on a different type of setting previously to what you work now. Can you Mm -hmm. talk about those two different um, positions just so just to show like the type of flexibilities or the type of work that you can do, because I think what you're doing now is very different from what you were doing before. Right. Yeah. So currently um, I decided to make a slight career um, adjustment um, mostly because I have young kids and um, it's nice to have a more stable schedule. So I currently just, primarily do office-based work, meaning I see patients in the office. And right now it's mostly focused on infertility. So seeing patients that are having trouble getting pregnant and helping them with their treatments, doing ultrasounds and things. So that's kind of my day-to-day job. And I still do um, hospital shifts. And that part, I, I spend the night at the hospital and see any patients that maybe they don't have a 
OBGYN doctor at all, or maybe they're traveling from out of town and they need someone. So, so that's what I do a few nights a month. I would say the traditional role of an OBGYN, which is what I did for about seven years before this, was kind of like you have several hats. You do clinic and you see your patients in clinic. You take care of them in their pregnancy. You try to be there when they deliver and also do any surgeries that come up. So all of that, that's more of a traditional OBGYN life where you are on call more often um, and it can be a little tiring and most of the time you work in groups so you have maybe a group of five doctors or four doctors so that means every fourth night or every fifth night one of you guys needs to be on call in case one of your patients is in labor or there's some sort of emergency. Thank you. And what would you say is the best thing you like about being an OBGYN doctor and probably the worst thing that you like about it? Oh, man, there's definitely a a lot of happy moments being an OBGYN doctor. We are really there at some pivotal moments in, in people's lives, not just women's, but whole families. You know, we're making people grandparents for the very first time and dads and It's a really beautiful thing, even though sometimes you're up at three in the morning delivering a baby, um, it still gets me like I still feel really happy at those times when um, we deliver a healthy baby into someone's arms. And I really, I really still enjoy that. Also, just helping someone through a surgery that maybe they they've been having horrible menstrual cycles and really heavy bleeding and and helping fix that with surgery and then them seeing you afterwards and saying, oh my gosh, this is one of the best decisions I made. Thank you for helping me through that. That's also very, very gratifying. And now being able to help people become pregnant, many of them have struggled for years and years and have been through so much and helping them become pregnant and now seeing that their babies are being born. There's nothing like that. I know that they will always remember us and our team for helping them have their baby that they've so longed for for so many years. On the opposite end, though, I think it just comes with the territory of being a doctor in general. The hardest things to do is really to give someone bad news. And that goes with all fields, I think, medicine. And that just doesn't get easier. I mean, having to tell someone that maybe they're having a miscarriage or that they lost their baby or that the fertility treatment failed, it's seeing the pain in their eyes, like you feel that too. And and it's that's always, um, always very hard. Yeah, I definitely agree. I remember doing my rotations in med school and I would say, I can remember those patients that I was in the room during the OBGYN rotations and having to tell them fourth, fifth time that they've lost their baby, it was really hard to be in there with them. Did you ever consider being another type of doctor while you were in med school? And what made you decide to be an OBGYN? Yeah, I did. I did consider um, doing family medicine because I think I've always wanted to do something with women's health and I was kind of afraid to narrow myself too quickly. But I always, always just loved women's health and I always loved like being an L&D and and even um, I love doing surgery too. So when I would talk to like mentors and people in family medicine, they all can perform those things like delivering and surgeries, but many of them don't. And it's actually really hard for family medicines for many reasons to do that and just focus on that. And at the end, like that was really what I loved. And so I decided to just stick to OBGYN. Yes, that that is true. I think uh, a lot of the family medicine doctors get stuck more in the primary care aspect of it, but because there's a need, obviously. So it's not by choice, but it's because of the need for patient care. Um, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Can you tell us about your upbringing and your background? Yes, of course. So I grew up in a very small rural town in California, in the Salinas Valley. 
my family, um, we are Mexican. So my parents are both um, born in Mexico. They immigrated to the United States. And like many um, Californians and Americans, um, trying to improve their life and the lives of their children. So I grew up there. It was a very, very small town. I think we had about 10, 11,000 people in the town. We did not even have a high school there. We didn't even have stoplights or fast food. <laughs> <laughs> I remember later in like my teenage years, they built a Burger King and it was a big deal. Like <laughs> I was wrapped around the block to go there. But that was the town I grew up in. Limited resources. Our, our schools were not very good. Even to this day, I think they're ranked amongst the lower tier in all of California. And I would have, you know, I went to public school there, um, elementary, middle school. And then for high school, I had to travel to the next town over. They would bus us to another town that did have a high school. And uh, I was, you know, I'm the oldest in my family. It's just me and my sister. So we would, um, I was always like very nervous about everything. Like, oh my gosh, am I going to do okay in high school? Am I going to still get good grades? I know I got good grades in middle school, but maybe in high school, I'm not going to do so well there. So so that's sort of how I, I grew up. My My parent, my dad always worked. My mom was able to stay home with us in our early years. And then she worked mostly at like at a tomato factory and then a wreath factory. And my dad always had, I guess, uh, blue collar jobs. He worked at the city, like city maintenance. So like if the sewer broke down and he would go and fix it. And then later on, he got a jo job more like um, at a prison and he would do a lot of like landscape and plumber work there. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that about your parents. <laughs> um, did your parents uh, go to school at all? Did they graduate, go to college? So uh, my dad uh, finished high school and that was it. Um, my mom in Mexico, she um, and my dad um, did do most of his school in the U.S., my mom went to school in Mexico and I think she didn't quite like like she finished like the grade school basically in Mexico. Oh, okay. Like a different system over there. Yeah, but she didn't finish, she didn't graduate high school though. I am not sure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all right. I know in Mexico Maybe it was like did, mostly she had... to like college, but okay, she, there was yeah no no college on either end. Yeah. So how did you navigate? Because you came from a very small town. How did you navigate going from high school to applying to college and? getting there oh man I remember in being a high schooler or even younger like knowing that I did want to go to college I think in the back of my head I always knew I wanted to be a doctor but um, I didn't know how to get there or what to do so I had to kind of seek help myself so I went to the high school counselor that was there and and I said, hey, how do I get into college? I didn't really know what steps I needed to do. And so he, you know, gave me kind of like the basics. And and I, I kind of had to navigate it on my own, I guess. I didn't have anyone helping me out, per se, at home. Not because my parents, they just didn't know either, you know. Yeah. So I had to figure that out. Somehow I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we all say, right? <laughs> I mean, somehow figured it out along the way because, yeah, you know, it's hard when you don't have your, not that your parents don't want to help you, they just don't know, right? So you kind of have to just rely on others and ask as well. So Yeah, I just I, I totally... to ask. Yeah, you know, I know that I don't know a lot of stuff. So I'm like, how do I apply for financial aid? How do I, so I, I knew some basics, but I'm like, I had to sort of figure, figure stuff out and how I, Back in the day, we had to apply like on paper for college. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like we grew up in. <laughs> yeah. But it's really neat because you did end up going to a very good school as well. You got accepted to UCLA, right? Yes, I did. And uh, I got accepted. I, I didn't apply to many schools. Like, I made a lot of, now looking back, I probably made a lot of mistakes. I, I didn't like broad, broadly apply everywhere. I was just like, mm, I think I want to go here. I didn't really have any 
re rhyme or reason to it. Um, and since I w kind of grew up closer to the Northern California, I really wanted to go to Berkeley. I just had mm. that idea in my head. And of course I did not get in. Um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm gonna go to UCLA. Um, <laughs> and I was a little bit nervous because Los Angeles is so big and I was yeah. nervous to go and leave my house. And um, so that was a big, big step for me, but I'm glad I did. Um, I needed to to kind of grow and, and blossom as a young adult. <laughs> yeah. What, at what point did you decide like for sure you wanted to be a doctor and you were going to pursue it? Um, I think it's, I think it was something that I always knew even as a little kid, I always wanted to be a doctor. I think I always liked science when I would remember looking at books and stuff. I always like would look at dinosaur books or like books about animals and like anything like kind of science space. I always loved that. So I think I, I think in the back of my head, that was where I always, I was more interested in that for sure. And I think um, I didn't know how, if I had like, I guess the academic strength to get there, but it was probably when I got to college that I was like, you know what, I could do this. Yeah. So that's probably when it really solidified for me. Very neat. So it's almost, it sounds like almost as soon as you started college, you kind of knew that was your path then. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. What would you say was the one thing that most made you question yourself if whether you were going to make it or not? I think some of the standardized testing um, was always hard. <laughs> um, well, at least for me, um, the MCAT, I struggled with the MCAT verbal section. Mm -hmm. I think I just didn't have um, going to public schools and not having like the best reading and writing skills. That that part made me question myself. Mm -hmm. But knowing that I was strong with math and science, uh, like uh, that kept me going. I was like, hopefully that I did well enough on those areas that I can still get into a medical school. And fortunately, it was it was enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that's great. I, I relate to you. Those are not my strengths either. <laughs> I struggled with both of those as well. Just the reading and writing. Ugh. But math and science, I was like, I can do that part. I don't know about the other part. <laughs> right. Can, uh, you know, the process through college, medical school, and then even residency, can you talk about a little bit about maybe some of those obstacles you faced there that, you know, just come to you that stand out? Because I know there's a lot, <laughs> you know, as you go through all of that, but probably some of the big ones and then how you overcame them. Okay. So um, medical school, um, definitely you have to up your game. There's a lot here with um, some very elite students that have uh, some of them went through private school their whole lives and were like groomed to go to med school and be doctors. So I think realizing that uh, I was at best average in med school was, was hard and changing your mentality from like, I'm going to get A's on everything to like, let's just pass these classes <laughs> and survive. Um, but you go through that fairly quickly, <laughs> and, and so you get very humbled at the amount of material that you have to memorize and get through is a lot. I think it's not that it's very difficult, but it's just a lot. And so that was hard. Like you just have to crank out a lot of information in, in a couple of years in, in med school. There's definitely certain subjects that still to this day I'm like do I understand the kidney that well like <laughs> kidney has always been a, a struggle for me but um but I I think um those were some of like the the educational challenges in med school and just kind of being a little isolated from your friends and family that was hard too. Like you are really just kind of studying all day. Um, you get little breaks um, 
And fortunately, I had a very nice close group in med school to to get us through those tough times where you literally have like a few minutes to laugh about something and then kind of get back to studying. So that was med school in in that way was hard. And then um, the rotations in med school, they have posed their own challenges, but I think for the most part, it, it was nice to kind of be a student and actually doing what you thought you were going to do your your whole life or since you've decided to go to med school. So that part was good. And of course, there's a lot of waking up early, getting to the hospital early. Um, so for those of you who are not early birds, you will become <laughs> early birds because medicine just starts early. Residency um, is, a, is a big um, big step, a big change. You have a lot more responsibility you are now like faced with the the hours of being a doctor, getting up early, rounding. It's where you really become a doctor. I feel like in med school, yes, you have the title, you're an MD, and they can call you doctor, but you still don't really know what the heck you're doing when you finish medical school, <laughs> even though you know a whole lot. But residency is is a challenge, like physically and emotionally. You're you're doing call. Um, now they do have a lot more hour restrictions on residents, but it's still, um, that part is physically, physically hard. I think just being on call, being up all night. Every now and then I have a, a bad call and I'm like, oh, this is what being a resident was like. <laughs> you know? But. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it's hard. I always say it, it residency trains you to be a parent just because you don't sleep, you wake up really early, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I said that transition from not being a parent to a parent after, you know, after residency, you're like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> but you, you, in the back of your head, you know that it's temporary. And yeah. you know that when you're done, yes, you yeah. have some hard days, but it, it's not as intense. Like residency yeah. is very intense and it's grueling. But at the same time, that's, that's what differentiates you from mm -hmm. from other people at the hospital, at the clinic. Like you have to kind of go through that long boot camp to to have that knowledge and those skills. Yeah, I agree. You know, as you were going, like even thinking back to high school and beyond, did anybody ever not encourage you to do it or tell you that you probably it would be too hard or you wouldn't be able to make it? Yeah, I did. I had a couple people, like high school teachers, tried to discourage me from going to UCLA. They thought it was too big of a school for, for a small town girl. And good thing I didn't listen to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or the, the school counselor, too, like saying, like, you know, most kids from around here, they, they don't go that far. They, they stay close by. And Fortunately, um, my parents were always very supportive, yeah. although they didn't love the idea that I was going to be hours away. They they always had my back and they said, you know, if this is what you want to do, we will support you. And it's because of their you know hard work and their support for me that I, I think I was able to get get through all of that. Thanks for sharing that. I'd like to ask that just because I feel, believe it or not, like most of the people I interview, there's been people along the way that have discouraged them either to go to college or to even think um, that being a doctor is an impossible dream for people like us. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you didn't listen. As we always say, you ignore those people and you just move on. Um, so that way you can make it. Before closing now, I always like to ask all the pe all the guests I have here is like, if you can go back in time to talk to your younger self, what kind of advice would you give yourself? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, I would tell my young self to, um, you know, I, I have one regret from college and that regret was not uh, going and studying abroad because I was too determined to finish and to get into med school. And and I think I would tell myself, you know, take that time and just do something 
fun and a new experience, I would tell myself that because if you have the determination and you put in the hard work, you can get it. You can get into med school and there's different avenues to do it, but you know, you you won't have that time as a young adult to kind of go back and do those experiences. So I, that's probably the only thing. Just be mentally prepared for um, for lots of ups and downs, but that's just life. You know, whether you're in med school or not or become a doctor, there's going to be ups and downs, and life is all about just navigating those things. Definitely agree. Sometimes I think it's, and some we do talk about this in a lot of our episodes, is it's okay to slow down sometimes and enjoy, <laughs> right? Um, you, you'll you get there and everybody gets there differently. So I'm glad you shared that because sometimes I think a lot of students who want to be doctors, we're like in a rush to get there, yeah. right? It's like, I got to get there, I got to get there. And before the stage, and before the stage where it's like, once you finish medical school, and residency, you're like, why was I rushing to get here? <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, so slowing down, yeah, enjoy right. life as you yeah. go, but you'll awesome. get there. So Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so I'm much for being here. That. And just so everybody that that is um, listening, um, hopefully you guys learned what an OBGYN doctor is. And I'm actually interviewing Dr. Contreras. And she also has her little daughter. So she's actually here interviewing with us. So just so you guys know, you can be doctors, you can be parents, you can have small children. And we're evolving to where we're making it a lot more inclusive for a lot of things and for women as general to be accepted of doing things and having your kids around. It's okay as well. But hopefully for those of you who have always wanted to be a doctor that delivers babies, you got an idea of what that work life is like and that it is possible and it can be very enjoyable as well. Peace and love, everyone.